Hello everyone, it's the Viper here and welcome to the first look of the Georgians. A new civilization introduced to Age of Empires 2 with the new DLC, the Mountain Royals, set to release October 31st. The Georgians are a cavalry civilization and also join the Byzantines and Koreans as the only three civs labeled as defensive. Right off the bat, the Georgians start with a mule cart, but minus 50 food. It is a good trade-off, however, as the cost of a mule cart is 20 food and 100 wood, but the start can be a bit harder with regards to maintaining villager production without doing loom. The mule cart is a mobile drop site where you can drop off wood, stone, gold and hunted food. You cannot deposit food from sheep, berries, fish or farms. The mule cart has to be built by villagers and will automatically move to the closest resource that you can collect upon completion, except hunt. It has 300 HP, 1 melee armor and 2 pierce armor, and to increase its armor and hit points you have to research masonry and architecture in the university. It also serves as one of your buildings required to advance to the feudal age. You can build mills and docks like any other civilization, but won't have access to a mining camp or lumber camp, however you do find their upgrades in the mule cart. As a cavalry civilization, the archer range is surprisingly alright. Crossbowmen are an option in the castle age, but no arbalist makes it a poorly scaling unit. You're only missing the last armor upgrade for ranged units, which makes your skirms not as tanky as you'd want them to be, but at least you do have bracer, so they can be very useful. Hand cannons can also be very useful in the right circumstances, as can the heavy cavalry archers with parton tactics, despite the lack of thumb ring. The barracks gives the Georgians very solid options. You have full infantry upgrades in the blacksmith and access to all upgrades and all units in the barracks except for eagle warriors. At first glance, the stable leaves a lot to be desired for what is supposed to be a cavalry civilization. However, let's look at some bonuses that might explain why the stable only gives us the very basic bloodlines, husbandry, hussar and cavalier. Naturally, they do have access to all the cavalry blacksmith upgrades, but the Georgians cavalry units also regenerate HP passively by default. No upgrade required. In the Feudal Age you recover 5 HP per minute, 10 per minute in the Castle Age and finally 15 HP per minute in the Imperial Age. Passive healing for a mobile unit is always very powerful because you can always pick your fights and escape if you need to. They have another civilization bonus where units and buildings receive minus 15% damage when fighting from higher elevation and cavalry units can always maneuver around to make sure they have the advantage of the high ground. Finally they have a unique tech in the Imperial Age which makes cavalry units take 15% less population space. It costs 750 food and 250 gold, which makes it a solid pickup in the late game due to the low gold cost. Normally you won't have more than 40-ish cavalry units on the field, so expect roughly 6 to 7 more population space to work with on average. The unique unit of the Georgians is also a cavalry unit and we'll look at that later. Siege options for the Georgians are great. They have siege ramps, siege onagers and heavy scorpions, making the only real miss the bombard cannon. With all the defensive bonuses of this civilization and siege engineers, I think that seems a fair compromise. Your dock options are not great. Normally on water there is no elevation in order to take advantage of your minus 15% damage reduction. And with no significant early economy bonus except starting with a mule cart and some potential economic flexibility with them, naval play will not be a strong suit of the Georgians. Whilst you do have both fast fire ships and galleons with Bracer, you're missing upgrades such as shipwright, heavy demolition ships and elite cannon galleons, meaning that you can pretty much just get by should you be forced to play water. Add to that, no heated shot for your towers to support water properly, however the towers might still be a key component to help out on water and you'll soon see why. Alongside the Armenians, the Georgians will not have the usual monastery but rather a fortified church. It costs 200 wood and has more HP and armor compared to a normal monastery. However, you'll notice that the fortified church also has an attack. With 5 damage and 6 range, it is a monastery that also functions like a tower with single arrows fired. You can garrison villagers, and funnily enough, relics, in order to provide additional projectiles. Monks can also garrison for safety, however, they will not add extra projectiles. The attack increases with range attack upgrades from the blacksmith and chemistry, but you cannot increase the range past 6. Their monk tech tree is solid, missing only atonement and illumination. As a civilization bonus, the Georgians can also spread fortified churches in their economy to serve both safety for garrison, defensive arrows, but also a powerful economy bonus. The building will provide villagers in a 10 tile radius with plus 10% work rate. It makes the building serve so many purposes that it's a no-brainer to include it in your base everywhere and you might even use that as your expansion building, like if you go to take a farther gold or a stone, you might drop a fortified church instead of a tower or a town center. 
and just wait until you hear about their last unique tech. As mentioned earlier, no heated shot available in the university, but besides that you're only really missing bomber towers. Your regular towers have all armor, HP upgrades and arrow slits, which is just the cherry on top as we look at the castle age unique technology of the Georgians. Swan towers cost 300 food and 200 gold and give all your defensive buildings plus 2 attack. This will impact castles, town centers, towers and fortified churches. On top of that, Swan Towers also changes your towers to fire arrows that pierce multiple units, like a Scorpion Ballista would. This furthers the narrative of Georgians being a defensive civilization, and their static defense is going to be a pain to deal with. Otherwise, all options in the castle are available, and this is also where we see the new unique unit, the Monaspa. It is a cavalry unit, costing 60 food and 45 gold, with 75 base HP, 12 attack, 3 melee armor and 2 pierce armor. What's unique about the Monaspa is that it grows in strength in numbers. The more Monaspas or Nightline units that are nearby, the more attack your army is going to get. The way this works is, if you have a total of 6 Monaspas or Knight units nearby each other, the Monaspas in that group will gain plus 1 attack. This will increase with every 5th Monaspa or Knight nearby. So at 6 units in total, you will have plus 1 attack on the Monaspa. At 11 you will have plus 2, at 16 plus 3, and finally with 21 knights or monaspas in the area, all the monaspas will have a total of plus 4 attack. Plus 4 will be the maximum bonus attack that you can achieve. The elite upgrade costs 1000 food and 700 gold and increases your HP by 15, attack by 2 and another 2 melee armor. They won't have a cavalry unit such as a paladin that is also extremely tanky against ranged units as well, but with all the cavalry bonuses combined, they should absolutely be an amazing cavalry civilization. They will also have access to guilds and all economy upgrades except gold shaft mining. And at last, their team bonus is just them extending their defensive prowess to their teammates, allowing them to repair buildings 50% cheaper. Keep in mind that team game bonuses also apply for 1v1, so it is a very useful bonus for when your town center is under the siege by mangonels or for example your castles are being attacked by trebuchets. In my opinion, this civilization will excel on defensive boomy approaches. I think they should also be a very strong civilization in pretty much any format on most maps, except probably water maps. The mobile drop sites will definitely take some getting used to, but it can potentially add flexibility to the economy development which can be super helpful for a civilization aiming for a more defensive approach. With the fortified churches providing both defense and economy bonuses, I can see that being an incredibly useful tool while trying to use cavalry and mobility to raid and counterattack. With great cavalry and solid options in both range units and infantry line, great siege weapons as well and an amazing static defense, this sieve should be an incredibly tough one to break. I personally don't think they have one standout unit that will appear super strong, but instead they will rely on the totality of their tech tree and bonuses in order to succeed. I can't wait to see the Swan Towers in actions and read about the frustrations of dealing with their static defense. Those are my thoughts on the Georgians, let me know what you think down in the comment section, is there anything that is too strong and where do you think they will rank in the hierarchy of broken civilization? Don't forget to leave a like, oh, let's not use that one. <laughs> Subscribe if you want to see more and also check out my overview of the Armenians and the new Persian rework. Thanks for watching.